A sister used to wear pants, but now she wears what? Dresses. A brother used to be gay and wear dresses. Now he has to do what? Right, right. Yeah, so be straight, but in his attire, he can't wear dresses anymore. What is he? He got to put on pants, right? Right. Okay. You got a girlfriend? You man, all praises, all praises. All, you got a girl? Single. Single? Uh, you ain't got nothing on the side? No. You ain't got nothing lined up? No. Okay. All praises, all praises, all praises. Uh, Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. Read. Exodus chapter 22, or verse 16. Uh -huh. And if a man entice a maid, how you entice a maid? How'd you get your wife? Flowers, take out the dinner, stuff you, like that. You see that? Yeah. You see that? That's how you entice a maid. Different women are enticed by different things. Right? Some, some women are enticed by uh, how nice a brother's car is. Some other women are enticed by how big a brother's feet are. Some other women are enticed by... Uh, you know how tall a brother is every woman got their own taste right and the man's job is to figure out if he's able to get this woman keep reading and if a man entice a maid uh -huh. that is not betrothed she not betrothed meaning she's not married to a man or promised to be married to a man read and lie with her what does lie with her mean to have sex with her Right, so you enticed her, you spit your game, you brought your flowers, right? You got her back to the room, the house, or what have you. Now y'all lay down, y'all making love, you know, whatever y'all call it in your generation. They way more vulgar in the younger generations. Read. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. What is the next step that you must do if you had sex with a woman? You got to do what? You got to what? You got to what? You got to get married. Y'all two having sex? The Bible says, but look, you, you say that like it's a normal thing, but according to the Bible, boyfriend and girlfriend isn't a normal thing, and sex outside of marriage isn't a normal thing, right? right? It's, a, it's a disruption of the, the order that God has set in place. Right. So God says, if that order gets disrupted, how do you fix that mistake? You must get what? Mary, Mary. So that's a part of our repentance. <laughs> in our unrepentance, we were boyfriend and girlfriend, in our repentance, we become what? We become husband and wife. We become husband and wife. All right, now my brother right here, I know you, you start rubbing your chin here when we start talking about marriage. Brothers get nervous when you talk about marriage. <laughs> but marriage is an honorable thing. Give me Hebrews 13 and 4. Marriage is an honorable... Somebody kick that cord from up under that leg. It's getting stuck. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Marriage is honorable in all, uh -huh. and the bed undefiled. So the Bible says that marriage is honorable. So, what comes first, children or marriage? It's marriage. Supposed to be marriage, right? Right. All right, what comes first, a community being built or children? How do you, how do you grow a community? Yeah, but you got to build, build a community first. Then well, raise the kids. I'm sorry. I'm not talking about the actual building itself. Not the actual house itself. To, to build a community. Like, we're, we're all a community, right? Let's say we're all a community. How would we grow that community? Would, it, would the growth happen first or would the children happen first? Children. The children, right? It's, it's a natural progression. So it starts with marriage, and then marriage results in children. Then the children grow up, and then the children do what? They get married right and then they have more children now the community grows and expands okay now a weak community the difference between a weak community and a strong community is going to be what let me see if i can get y'all thinking um the difference between a weak community like a, a frail fragile weak community and a strong community who can give me some examples between the differences between the two Okay. No children. All right. Who else got some some thoughts? It's gonna be a while. Gonna be a while. Okay. I like to teach interactively. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. So let's say you go in the suburbs, right? Bunch of people living. You got kids outside. They what are they doing? They playing, doing whatever they do. They riding their bikes. You know what I mean? You might see little signs up, say, drive slow, kids live here. Those types of communities typically have what inside the house um, teaching those children? Fathers. Mmm. And if it's a father in the house, it's probably what? 
a mother, right? So now you got more order and organization to the community. Okay, now let's go back to the projects. Projects has a bunch of kids, right? What are those kids doing? Playing. Playing. What else they doing? Well, give me some examples of some of those troubles and mischievous things. Banging on doors, okay. Throwing eggs, smoking weed, maybe breaking into houses, committing different types of crimes, right? And then when you go back to that house where that child is being raised, what's typically missing? A father. A father. That's why Exodus 22 and 16 is so important. It says that a man and woman that have sex with each other, they must do what? Get married. Because if you fix that on the front end, now what happens? It's also fixed on the back end. Because if you don't apply that law, what do you end up with? You end up with a baby mama. You end up with a bastard child. You end up with a no good daddy. And that no good daddy couldn't teach the son to do better than him because he ain't in the house. Right? So when the scriptures say marriage is honorable, that honor does not stop with the marriage. That honor transfers over to the children, to the kids. And then it goes into the generations. And it builds a strong what? Community. And that's what we're out here to teach our people. How to build strong marriages, how to have strong children so that we can have a strong community and we can take this earth back like we're supposed to be ruling it. But it all starts with not doing boyfriend and girlfriend no more. You had a question, my sister? Yeah, I said, what if the mother and dad not together anymore? Dad said we'll be in the house to raise kids. Yeah, he was, supposed to, he was never supposed to leave. The mama won't supposed to run him off or run her mouth too much. You know what I mean? And he won't supposed to be weak and run away from trouble in the flesh. Right. It's always going to be some trouble in the flesh. You and your wife have arguments? We have disagreements. Yeah, disagreements. That's a better word. Disagreements. Y'all have grown past arguments, right? Never really. I'm not an arguing type. We don't argue. Oh, praise God. And, and I don't know if y'all caught that. But the reason that there's not an argument is because he's not the arguing type. Right. Because if you were the arguing type, every disagreement could turn into what? An argument. an argument. That shows you the strength of the household is in the man. Right. It's in the man. That's the order that was established. Give me 1 Corinthians 11. That's the order that was created that must be adhered to. That's the order that doesn't exist in a household with no father. Right. When there's not a wife because there's not a husband. These are the things that we must fix in our households and in our community. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Uh -huh. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So we're not absent from that. We're not exempt from that. We've got a head too. Sisters, y'all got a head? Guess who it is? Us. Us. And if you're married specifically, that head is your husband. And if you're unmarried, that head is supposed to be your father. Until you get married. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. Is who? The man. Didi, who's the head? The man. That's right. And the head of Christ. Hey, look, that made him feel good. You know what I mean? My brother over there starts smiling. You know what I mean? He starts strutting a little bit, rocking back and forth. That make a brother feel good. But that's where the honor in marriage is from. The honor in marriage is a brother being in order and a sister being in order. All right? And then the children are in order. Then the generations are in order. Then the community is in order. We are already better than these other nations in our destruction. Teach. Imagine when we come together with honorable marriages and raise honorable children and have honorable generations and honorable communities. The world is yours, my brother. But you got to take it back. Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Did we finish the order? We yeah. finish. Read it again. But I would have you know. That the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is the most high God. That is his son. They are not one and the same. It's not a trinity like Christianity has lied to us about. The most high God, the creator of all things, created himself a son. Which is came in the flesh. As Jesus the Christ. Right. All right. Let me uh, get a little bit more. Y'all have any questions? Because we're not going to be out here too. Do you understand that you're an Israelite? Okay. How long have you known that? I've been following uh, you guys on uh, YouTube. Bishop Nathaniel. Oh, so praise. And just, you know, reading scriptures and stuff like that. Oh, Doing praise. 26, what was it? 28, 68. Take it take back. Take it back to these ships. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling pretty you know, Okay. All right. I'm in good Okay. You understand your nationality? 
been uh, researching. Still researching? Yeah. All praises. Now, you understand today that the people who came to America on ships and served as slaves, do you understand that those were the Israelites? <laughs> let, me, let me just go back over that real quick. That's the primary sign. Remember we talked about the golden arches? That is the sign to help you know who the real Israelites are. Give me Deuteronomy 1 and 1. I'm going to show you that that prophecy, that, that sign was for the Israelites to help them identify who they are in the last days, all right? I need you to walk away understanding that you're an Israelite. Understanding it. If you got to research more on it, that's fine. But you at least need to be familiar with the concept, all right? Deuteronomy 1 and 1. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Moses spake to who? All Israel. So we're reading the book of Deuteronomy, and Moses is speaking to who? All Israel. All Israel. Now we're in the same book, chapter 28, verse 15 again. No, no, ver, uh, verse 68. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Still talking to all Israel. And remember verse 15 told us if they didn't do all of what? The commandments that these curses would come upon them. And that verse 46 said that the curses would be a what? A sign. Now I'm going to read you the primary curse that represents as a sign for people to understand in these last days who the real Israelites are. I'm read it again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee. Thee is the nation of who? Israel. Read. Into Egypt. Into Egypt. Egypt represents what? We got you. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. What is bondage? There you go. Another word for bondage is going to be slavery. Right. All right, now verse 68 again. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee. The thee is the who? Israelites. Read. Into Egypt. Egypt is what? Bondage, or another word for bondage is slavery. So the Israelites will be brought into slavery again with ships. The Israelites are the ones that got brought into slavery by way of ship. That didn't happen to any other people on this earth other than the people that look like you and I. So that means that is a sign to help you and I know that we are who? We are Israelites. That's right. We are the Israelites. That is the right. mystery that's been hidden from our people for 400 plus years. That we are the Israelites. We must repent and return back to the laws that we broke that made us get brought here as slaves on way of ship. Not marrying our sisters is a reason why we got brought here uh, right. on slave ships. Uh, coming out here buying and selling on Saturdays, that goes against the Sabbath. That's one of the reasons why we had to come here on slave ship. Right. Celebrating birthdays, right. celebrating Christmas, right. July 4th. All these things that God told us not to do are the reason Deuteronomy 28 and 68 had to be fulfilled. Right. Now in these last days, the Most High is waiting on a very special number of people, a very special number of men to wake up and realize that they are the true Jews, the real Israelites that the Bible speaks of, and repent. Once that number is sealed, bombs are coming to America to destroy this whole place and all of people that still want to commit sin. All right? That is the gospel. That is the good news. You should have our contact information on the back. Is it 2.30? Yes, sir. All right. You can give us a call. We'll answer any questions that you have. But we, most importantly, we need you at the school, brother. We need you at the school. The Bible says that we must gather ourselves together. Give me Zephaniah 2 and 1. This, this, is, this is us fishing. This isn't the gathering. This is not the gathering. The gathering is going to be at the school every Sabbath day because God commands us to gather every Sabbath. It's a holy convocation. God gives us, we have our own heritage. We have our own dietary laws, food that we ain't supposed to be eating, better foods that we are supposed to be eating. We're supposed to gather under that. We have our own holy days. We don't call them holidays. Because those are folly days. They lie to us about the days they make us celebrate. Right. They force you to celebrate it because they tell you you can't come into work on that day. Right. You know, stores closed. Business is shut down. So you don't got a choice but to go home. And then what? You see everybody in the neighborhood grilling and chilling. You're like, damn, well, let me throw some burgers on the grill too. Next thing you know, you celebrate in July 4th. But July 4th, 1776, what were you doing? 
You was what? You was what? Still in slavery. And you celebrate that slavery every year from the time you was born. Mama had to cook out. Mama cooked the pork ribs. They light that grill up. Brother's mouth watering right now. But we got to repent from those things. We must turn away from those things. Every Thanksgiving, what, what happened every Thanksgiving? You do what? What, what you eating? Turkey. Turkey. Stuffing. Macaroni and cheese. That's uh, celebrating the slaughter. Isn't it? There it is. But look, y'all come look at the sign before y'all leave. Guess who those Native American Indians are? You see that? That says Gad. Who is the tribe of Gad today? The American Indians. That's of the 12 tribes of Israel. No. No. The white man came over here, conquered your cousins, and celebrated it. Celebrated his God for giving him victory over your people. And every year that turkey represented the American Indians' bodies. And that cranberry sauce represents the blood that was shed. And that stuffing represents the guts that came up out of them when they got slaughtered. Are you serious? I'm 100% serious. What Black Friday? Black Friday, during all, we were sold on the auction blocks on Black Friday. You know what I mean? That, that was us being sold. We was on sale the first Black Friday. You get two niggas for 500. Who won it? Sold. That's what happened. Wall Street. Yeah. Wall Street was, a, was an auction block. Yeah, they was moving. They, they, the, the, first, uh, the first commodity was Negroes. Right. America is built on the back of niggas and Hispanics. That's right. And as soon as you realize that, you stop following the custom. What, what you hold? Nice. Oh, as soon as you realize that, you start to apply this. Read the book of Zephaniah, chapter two and verse one. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. You realize we used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.